What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I am the Renegade JJ Williams, and today I'm going to be talking about from 2015, Stormageddon, starring John Hennigan, better known as John Morrison, Johnny Nitro, Eve Morrow, Joseph Gatt, Robert Blanche, Rico Ross, David Shatra, and Adrian Paul. Thank you for joining me, everybody, here on a brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. Welcome, as always. And I, I just feel like I have to get full disclosure out here right in the beginning. This may be one of my shorter reviews, and I'm going to tell you why. Usually when I watch the movies, I put all electronic devices down. I put down my paper and pen, and I just focus on watching the movie. And then when I'm done, I'll go to Wikipedia or whatever, and I'll bring up the wiki page for the film, look at the plot description, and then I'll take my notes based off of that, you know, using my own wording, elaborating on certain things, filling in pieces that I feel like they left out in their description, etc. This movie has no wiki page. I had to search high and low on the internet to find like a paragraph and a half plot description of this film when I was done. So as a result, I don't have as detailed a notes as I usually would have. Um, I will go ahead and let you know that as a result of this, I have done my due diligence. And now, prior to watching these films, since a lot of these films that are starring wrestlers aren't near as mainstream as a No Holds Barred or a They Live or a Princess Bride, etc., I'm going ahead and I'm checking these before I start watching the film. And then I'm using the voice to text feature on my phone to take notes as I watch it. That way, my pausing the film, you know, takes less time and doesn't delay the process of the film that long. In any event, I apologize in advance if this is a shorter film review, but let's get right into it. Our film begins with the United States getting attacked by our own drones. The military is running some operations, and right when the drones are about to fire, the program is taken over by Echelon, an artificial intelligence, kind of like um, Cyberdyne, if you think, in The Terminator and how the machines start to uprise. It's kind of a similar thing happening here where the AI is taking over the system and it starts the drones attacking the US instead of their military targets. Now, while the government is trying to figure out what's going on, our heroine, a journalist by the name of Molly, receives a package with a VHS tape in there from her deceased father. And the message that he leaves for her basically is a warning about what is about to take place, about Echelon taking over and what could come. He tells her to track down a man by the name of Thomas Kelso. And when he finds her, to call him Adam. And if she does that, Kelso will know that he can trust her. Because the only other person to ever call her Adam is her father. So not many people know of Kelso as Adam. Now, Molly and Adam find each other. Molly tracks down, calls every Thomas Kelso in the phone book, and eventually she finds him. 
when she tells him that she needs to meet with him and calls him at him over the phone, at first he's kind of taken aback, you know, caught off guard. He ends up tracking her down and they try to attempt to figure out what's going on. Now there's two cyborgs, Kane and Abel, who are trying to stop them. They are partially behind Echelon's takeover. And Adam and Molly begin to piece together clues left by Molly's father. They, they don't focus so much on what he says in the video, but what he doesn't say. What's in the background? Little things that either Adam recognizes or Molly recognizes as warning signs. And they're able to figure out how to stop the Echelon takeover. During an encounter between Adam and Kane, Adam is able to kill Kane, leaving only able to contend with. This really cool um, gun that Adam uses, electronic, to be able to fry the systems in Kane. However, after the scuffle, Adam is injured also. And Molly learns that Adam is a cyborg as well, just like Cain and Abel. The difference here is that Adam was programmed to protect, while Cain and Abel were programmed to destroy. Two complete polar opposite sides of the same program. So, what echelon could be if used for good, what echelon could be when used for bad. They get to the lab where Adam was created by Molly's father, and they discover that they have to plug Adam in to the hardware in order to stop the systems, to stop the echelon attack. By doing so, though, Adam will die, essentially ceasing to exist. We have one final encounter between Adam and Abel, Abel being destroyed, similar to the means in which Cain was destroyed. And Adam goes back to the laboratory and agrees to plug in because even though he will cease to exist, Echelon will be defeated. And with his mission being to protect by any means necessary. He sacrifices himself to save the world. Echelon program is defeated. The film begins to come to a close. And just when we think everything is done and over with, Adam opens his eyes up, which set the stage for a sequel which as of yet has not been made. I got to say, you know, I watched a 20-minute video on YouTube to try to gain more um, plot point stuff to discuss in my elaborations here. And the guy on YouTube just ran this movie down hardcore. Now, is... Are any of these movies, if we're being honest, any of these movies that star wrestlers going to be top-tier, Oscar-worthy performances? No, that's not what they're about. At best, these are B-movie popcorn flicks. At worst, they're like D-movie, Mystery Science Theater 3000, kickback, and crack on them as you're watching them. Those, those are basically your two levels when it comes to these movies. I would say that Stormageddon kind of falls in the middle there. I mean, there's definitely some laughable points to the film. 
there's definitely some dry acting. John Morrison, I think, does a good enough job. John Hennigan does a good enough job with what he's handed. Um, Adrian Paul, best known from the Highlander series, I thought did a decent job with the role he was given. Joseph Gatt, who played the dual role of Cain and Abel. Eve Morrow really wasn't a very interesting heroine, in my opinion. But I feel like John Hennigan kind of made up for it a little bit. This definitely could have used a little bit of revisioning, um, rewriting when it came to the flick. But all in all, considering what it was, I'm going to go ahead and give this film two and a half out of five stars. Like I said, I think John Hennigan in this action movie did a really good job. I am looking forward to seeing him in other films as we continue our movies that star wrestlers here in March. Um, we are going to have him pop up a couple more times down the road. And for this to be the first outing of him as an actor that I have seen in a film, I can only assume it's going to get better. I could be wrong, but I think he'll only get better in future movies. What do you guys think of Stormageddon? Those of you that have seen it, let me know. Leave your thoughts in the comment box below. As always, I value your guys' comments and your feedback. Let me know if you've seen it. If you haven't seen it, it is free to stream on YouTube. And if you have the Tubi app on your Roku or on your Blu-ray player, it's free to stream on that as well. So check it out and let me know what you guys think. Let's not forget to get those hashtags trending out there on social media. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios. Hashtag Renegades Reviews. Hashtag Renegade Returns. And, of course, the ever-popular hashtag shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about... Merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor, Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network, and score your shirts today. Don't forget to come back tomorrow and join me here on another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively, as always, on the Casa D18 Studios channel, when I will be tackling the Rowdy Roddy Piper classic from 1988, Hell Comes to Frogtown, starring Roddy Piper, of course, Sandal Bergman, Cease Verrill, William Smith, and Rory Calhoun. Definitely going to be another interesting one to talk about if you've ever seen Hell Comes to Frogtown. It's, it's a doozy. If you haven't, then before my episode go, goes live tomorrow, once again, the Tubi app has it for streaming for free right now. Give it a watch and come back here tomorrow when I discuss it right here on another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively on the Casa D18 Studios channel. Thank you guys for watching as always, and I will see you guys next time.